how long does it take to get faster? Or how long does it take to run fast for longer intervals? I got this great question in the comments below. I've been doing 400s for some time and watching your videos has me trying to increase the same speed for longer. I went for 400s at 345 per kilometer, then 600s, now 800 meters. But after six with one minute break, I was done. I'll try again next week, but I really can't see it getting any easier. I ran so hard, <laughs> I had to stop and walk. I know you say one minute rest, but I might try two minutes rest and see and work the rest break down. So it's three minutes to do 800 meters. I'm 62 years old and just enjoying the process. The goal is a race in November, is 85 minutes half marathon in Auckland. My PB is 87 minutes, but I'm fighting back on age now. Then April in Christchurch, marathon sub three if I'm in shape, but decided let's be the process goal rather than the outcome. And I think the brilliant thing from that already is the guy's 62, he's pushing the limits and he's pushing forward. He's clearly like tasting blood on an interval session and really going at it and knowing when to call it a day, but also trying to break PBs at 62 years old, which is great. And even better than that, understanding that it's the process, it's the journey that is the reward, not the final result. And this is the thing with running and runners. We often get fixated. It might be the sub three hour marathon or it might be a sub 80 minutes or a sub 90 minute half marathon. We're fixated on minutes and seconds when in actual fact, if we're moving forward continuously, that's pretty brilliant. And no matter what we're doing, it's pretty brilliant. And those results compound. What I'd say there is that part where it's like, I don't think it's gonna get any easier. When you did the 400s at 345 per kilometer and then move up to 600s, how easy was that jump? And then now you're doing 800s at 345, it seems, or it would suggest from that question, you're able to hold six times 800 meters at 345. And it's tough because you're only being given one minute rest. There's a few things changing here. So you're relatively new to interval training or interval training in this way. Done the 400s, done the 600s, done a lot of those 800s and I don't know whether it was a six times 800 meters or an eight times 800 meter session I think it was a six times 800 meter session but it started to hurt it started to feel like I cannot recover in time you've also got this new recovery where it's 60 seconds got to get the breathing under control because I've got to go again in 60 seconds it is great for for running whether you're running and training for 5k or a marathon it's brilliant to be able to recover really quickly but what it also does is allows you to judge the pace that you can run an interval for because if you tried to do that in three three minutes per kilometer then you wouldn't recover because the heart rate would go to 190 and you'd bring it back to maybe 160 during the rest and you wouldn't be able to do anywhere near three minutes for the next rep it's exactly the same when it comes to the recovery. The recovery is as important as the rep in terms of monitoring fitness over time. So if you're noticing that it's just not coming down, what it should look is like the bumps are gradually going up like that if it's getting harder and then they begin to level off as you become more fitter, more accustomed to those distances and rep lengths. But then the, the valleys, the recoveries in between the heart rate in the, on the heart rate graph will still go slightly up because it's probably more difficult and that will lag so you'll see the heart rate flatten off before you see the valleys, the recoveries flatten off. They'll still be at a gradient before they flatten off. And I'll try to put a picture at this point so you understand what I mean. The next point is I'll try again next week, but I don't think it's gonna work. And so what we think in our mind is, and I'm watching this happen in real life now that we've started this all in run club in Dubai. Immediately, 20 times one minute, People, oh, it's only one minute. I, I'll go quick. And then after five or six, <gasps> coach, how many have we got left? You've got 15 left. It's difficult because it's faster than they had ran on the 5K all in run club on the Sunday. And so all of a sudden you're teaching the body to move over the ground in a faster way. What people were then expecting was that that Sunday they were going to be able to run much fit, faster for 5K. It just doesn't work like that. But what it will happen is that you're mentally much more prepared. So people were watching their 5K time go from 36 minutes to 34 minutes and going, yes. And that's brilliant that they're in that positive flywheel, but they also, you also need to manage the expectations to let them know that 
it's going to be a few weeks before you see the physical and physiological benefits. But along the way, you'll be able to judge it. You'll be able to pace it better. You'll be able to, in exactly the same way that you'll be able to pace the interval session better. You've got more experience with interval sessions. But realize that it's the consistency. I don't mean that in a condescending way, but appreciate that it's the consistency over the weeks and months that is going to lead you towards your goal. And if right now it feels way too hard to be holding 345 pace for 800 meters and you're trying to do six or eight of them, bring it back a bit. Just bring the pace back a little bit because you're still going to be pushing up your levels. You're still going to be pushing up the capacity. You're probably working in zone three, zone four. I don't want to get too technical on this channel for most of these videos, but essentially you're still moving forward and it's going to move your 5k time forward it's going to move your half marathon time forward because you learn to move over the ground more efficiently and more effectively and that's going to have a knock-on effect for all of your running it should make your easy runs and recovery runs faster in a way that you're not putting in more in more effort but for let's say 120 or 130 beats you're able to go faster over the ground so all you're running is moving forward and if you think of the entire equation as a triangle, trying to build the base of the triangle, and that's your endurance. And it might be, you know, the 80, 20, it might be 80% of your running is building the base of the triangle. And then what we're trying to do is get the, the peak of the triangle as high. And it would make sense that if the base of the triangle is wider and getting wider, building that base, and the peak of the triangle is higher, meaning a top end speed, then it's the surface area of the triangle that really counts. And that's what we're doing as athletes. We're building the surface area of the triangle in the same way that we're building the capacity in the surface area of the alveoli in the lungs. So I think you're doing great. And I think by pushing yourself on a regular basis, every Wednesday and making that happen, clearly doing the work as well on the long run, and building that endurance and stamina that feeds nicely into your half marathon, I think you're in a great place. And I think just by asking that question and telling me what you've done and, where, and how it was and how it's feeling, you know exactly how to course correct. And if that means bringing back the pace, don't worry about the ego, drop the ego, bring that back. And if that means four minutes per kilometer or 350 or 355, within a few weeks, you'll gradually see yourself and you will come back and hopefully, please do, come back and let me know when eight times 800 meters or 10 times 800 meters at 345 pace feels super comfortable. Cheers, Alan.